So types of muscle contractions. Um, before we get into the types, let's talk about the purpose of muscle contraction. It's to maintain a position, to raise a segment or an object, or lower or control the motion of a segment or an object. And you've probably heard of these types of contractions in other classes. The first we will discuss is concentric contractions. One definition is that the muscle shortens during the contraction, um, which is a fairly simplistic definition of a concentric muscle contraction. Um, another definition is it, it opposes gravity. And so if you imagine lifting, um, say, a dumbbell during, say, a flexion extension of your elbow exercise, you are opposing gravity. You're taking that dumbbell and lifting it in the opposite direction of gravity. Another definition could be that the muscle torque, or the internal torque, so the force of the muscle times its internal moment arm, overcomes the external torque, or the force of the dumbbell and the external moment arm. Um, another way to look at this is that the muscle torque or internal torque and the joint direction are the same. So during a, a dumbbell flexion extension exercise, you are using your biceps brachii. So it is creating a flexor, elbow flexor torque. And during the concentric contraction, you are flexing your elbow. So it is a biceps brachii torque. You are also flexing the elbow, and so the muscle torque and the joint are the same. They are both flex flexor or flexing. Uh, and it's also important to remember that during a concentric muscle contraction, the force generated by the muscle is always less than the muscle's maximum force. So here we see uh, the elbow joint. Here's our, our biceps brachii muscle, line of force the perpendicular distance between that line of force and the joint center of rotation. So that creates our muscle torque or muscle moment, another way to say torque. Um, and so when that is a, the muscle is creating a flexor torque, which is what the biceps brachii do, right? Because they're flexor muscles and your joint is flexing, then that is a concentric contraction. Um, note muscles can only pull and so the biceps brachii is creating a flexor moment or torque. That's all it can do. When the, the joint flexes, um, the torque and the joint are both flexion, so the muscle is concentrically contracting. And obvious, the opposite would be an eccentric contraction when the joint torque, the internal torque and the joint direction are opposite. So you have a biceps brachii flexor torque, and if you're elbow is going into extension, that would be the eccentric contraction. So here we see the concentric contraction. Um, and now let's discuss eccentric contractions. Again, simplistically, it's when the muscle lengthens. Um, another way to view it is it is controlling gravity, right? So gravity goes at 9.81 meters per second squared. Gravity is not helping you you must control that incredible speed of gravity as you're lowering anything. The external torque of what you're lifting, that dumbbell times that external moment arm, is greater than your muscle torque or your internal torque. It is a braking mechanism to control movement speed. So it's usually during the follow through, right? During the follow through phases of most activities, you will have an eccentric contraction, which is the braking mechanism. And as I just mentioned in the previous slide, and I'll mention again, muscle torque and joint direction are opposite. Eccentric contractions um, can generate the same force with fewer muscle fibers. They are very efficient contractions. And m most of our normal activity is um, via eccentric muscle contractions. Typically, muscle injury and soreness is related to this type of contraction, and most of you will know that if you ever did um, a workout that focused on eccentric contractions. So here we see from flexion, so the biceps brachii is creating a flexor torque, and as we see, our joint goes into extension, so the internal torque or the muscle torque is opposite of the joint motion, 
and that is an eccentric contraction. We also have an isometric contraction where there's no movement at the joint, no change in joint angle at all. And so here we see a movement that's just isometric. All right, so how do we assess this? And again, it's hard to view with pictures, but here we have a, a lateral raise. So position one to position two, we're going through a B-duction from two or from the center to um, the third position, or phase two, we're going from AB to ADduction. So we're ADducting. So phase one, the motion at the glenohumeral joint, ABduction. The cause of this motion, basically it has to be an internal cause to lift or oppose gravity. Um, so if if the cause is internal or you're opposing gravity, it is always going to be a concentric contraction. The muscles that we're using are agonists to abduction, which are our deltoids and our supraspinatus. So with phase two, the motion is adduction. The cause is an external cause because we are controlling gravity, controlling the lowering of those weights external cause or controlling gravity. External controlling gravity is always an eccentric contraction. And the muscles are the antagonist to adduction, which is another way to say the abductors, which again are deltoids and supraspinatus. So deltoids, supraspinatus concentrically contracting. And in the down phase or phase two, the deltoids and supraspinatus um, eccentrically contracting. And we'll pick up more on contractions in the next video.